And when you're in Addison, PA, don't forget to stop by and pay your respects to the Honorable, a tribute to those who served in memory of those who made the supreme sacrifice. Feature names from World War II, World War I, and the Spanish-American War. Which is located right across the street from this. Hey guys, welcome to Redout Productions, and in this tour video, we're going to be talking about the Addison Toll House. Just about a half a mile down the road there is US 40. You can hear it off in the distance. Uh, however, this is the original route of US 40, which before was known as the National Road. And going through Addison, you will pass this toll house. Now, the toll house, to understand the toll house, you need to understand the story of the National Road. And that's going to take us all the way back to about the 1700s. There were various native trails passing, crisscrossing over the Appalachian Mountain Ranges. One of them in particular became known as the Nemecolon Trail. Now that Nemecolon Trail in 1754 would be widened a bit by young George Washington as a military road to get from Virginia to what would become Pittsburgh. However, before Washington get there, the French had established Fort Duquesne thus sparking off the French and Indian Wars. In 1755, to take the uh, try to take the fort, Edward Braddock led his British force with about 2,000 men out of Cumberland, Maryland, widening uh, Washington's route. And he got about nine miles short, as you'll know probably from some of my other videos that end up in the Braddock, Battle of Braddock's Defeat. And Braddock actually was buried within Braddock's Road and his monument's not, uh, it's just off of US 40. So fast forward now to the turn of the century, we're going now into the early 1800s, around the days of Thomas Jefferson as president, and the Congress and Jefferson approve funding for the first federally funded highway. This would become the Cumberland Pike. The road is going to run out of Cumberland, Maryland, and go into Virginia, and well now West Virginia, up around Wheeling, and eventually finds its way to hold out to Illinois. Now, because of the Secretary of the Treasury, Albert Gallatin, he uh, put in, for the, in order for the funds to be used to make this road, that the road had to cut into the corner of Pennsylvania. To so the state of his residence get a piece of this national road pie, if you get what I mean. <laughs> so that's why the road it doesn't take a direct route. It kind of veers off just to go for that little lip of western Pennsylvania that we're standing in today. Now, although it was approved in 1806, the road did not begin construction until 1811, and construction occurred a whole way into the 1830s. The National Road was only the second highway in the United States to use the macadam process of making roadways. And essentially what it is, they would take pressed dirt, uh, they would take pressed rocks, crush them up for various rings, and then they would take about a free ton roller that would go down the roadway, and about 20 feet in width, you would have this pressed dirt road. Unfortunately, not only was this time consuming, uh, macadam roads, while very strong, cannot live up to western Pennsylvania's weather, <laughs> or any weather around here in the Appalachian Mountains. So the road was gradually eroding by the 1830s. After the road was finished, it went as far as Vandalia, Illinois. After it reached that point, uh, in the 1830s, the national government decided they were no longer going to support the road and instead give ownership it over to the various states. Therefore, states such as Maryland, Pennsylvania, and Virginia decided to set up toll gates every 15 miles. Hence, that's where you get the Addison Toll Gate. Uh, the toll house here was built out of native stone in 1835. It was designed by Richard Delafield, who you might know as being the designer for the Dunlap's uh, Creek Bridge in Brownsville, PA in 1836, which was the first cast iron bridge built in the United States. Now the house has two st uh, the two-story octagonal design, and you have also a one-story segment off to the side. Now the toll keeper and his family would live here rent free. They got a $200 salary every year. Not that much, even in today's money. I think it's only about $5,000 if you ju adjust it to today's money. But hey, you're living rent free in this uh, toll house. Uh, and another thing they also did when they established these toll houses throughout the states, they established white obelisk markers 
about every mile on the north side of the road. Previously, they had about stone markers every five miles of the road, but now they had the white obelisk markers uh, every mile on the north side of the road. And those are those famous white obelisk markers that many of them are still around today, and some of them have been restored or replaced. So still pretty cool if you drive around US 40, you can still find the white obelisk. So the newer ones are on the north side of the road, the older ones were on the south side of the road. Just a cool little tidbit. And over here, you can see the various tolls. And like I said back then, it was called the Cumberland Road in Pennsylvania. There you got all them different tolls. Got for hogs, six cents. Sheep, six cents. Cattle, 12 cents. Horse and rider, four cents. Blah, blah, blah. You can read all this stuff, guys. I'm too lazy to read. Major boom for the National Road actually occurred when it was under the state ownership. Um, it was used frequently by, uh, d during its national ownership, but once it got given to the states, when it really took off, this was the first major road over the Appalachian Mountain Range and pretty much allowed for West, was made route for westward expansion. Uh, they were able eventually in the late 1830s, the Pony Express started using the National Road. Uh, you had several stagecoach routes. Uh, multiple businesses opened up. However, in 1853, the first railroads would reach the Ohio River, and that was the death knell for the National Road. And by the 1860s, travel had completely dropped off. The last toll was collected out of here, I believe, in 1906. And it's kind of uh, the state tried to rent it out. Nobody really wanted to buy this dil dil dilapidated building. And uh, you think that'd be good for the National Road, but no, it does have a, uh, it comes back to life. Uh, what starts happening is uh, you can start getting curious bikers who, you know, they want to use a nice paved pathway to ride their uh, bicycles. Unfortunately, the Macadam Road was completely shot by that point. So what they end up doing instead, uh, the federal government's going to have to get involved and they will authorize the paving of the National Road again. And it will also adjust some realignments, hence how US 40 itself actually bypasses Addison. So you pave the road, and not only are you going to have bicyclists, now you're going to have the first vehicles coming in. You're going to have various uh, transportations going to boost up, and again, it's now a major route of transportation. Now, as for the toll house, they weren't uh, collecting tolls by you know the 1930s, and in 1949, this was given over to the Great Crossings chapter of the Dars of the American Revolution, which is named after uh, one of the river crossings just a couple miles from here, a couple miles from here, uh, what is now the Yakagani Lake, where Washington and Braddock had to cross the Yakagani River. Uh, the crossing itself is now buried underwater. Uh, an old national road bridge that's partially submerged under that lake. But anyways, back to our story about the Aston Toll House. In very poor state of repair, uh, fortunately, uh, over the latter half of the 20th century, the Dars and Revolution restored it to its 1835 appearance. They installed this nice statue here dedicated to the toll house keepers. And in 1976, yeah, I have to look, I'm cheating. It uh, doesn't have a date. 1976, we're gonna go with, this was installed on the National Registry. Oh no, 1979, my apologies folks, it was 1979 when this was put on the National Registry. And it still stands here today in Addison, PA. Uh, all you have to do is just hop off US 40, just drive less than a mile up on this older alignment, and you will come across the Addison Toll House. Uh, this is one of only three surviving toll houses of the National Road. There's two in Pennsylvania, this one. There is one outside of Uniontown, the Sea Wright Toll House, and there is one surviving in Maryland, the Lavelle Gate Toll House, which uh, is actually the first one on the road. Had been the first one built. However, this one is the Lord with Toll Gate that was given Toll Gate Number One. So I hope you enjoyed this quick little video on the history of the Addison Toll House. We do videos like this on Readout Productions. Our primary actually focus on military history throughout uh, the 18th, the 18th to 20th century. But I focus on all sorts of different types of history, especially if it pertains to Western Pennsylvania, Western Maryland, and Northern West Virginia. So if you want to see any particular places you want to see me visit and ramble about, uh, just let me know in the comments. And thank you guys for watching.